Well, hi. Uh, this is uh, November 13th, 2011. Uh, this last week, the world of collegiate sports was shocked by the revelation of years of uh, childhood sexual abuse at Penn State University. Now, I live in the Pittsburgh area and in, in the state of Pennsylvania. And for years and years, Penn State football has been a, uh, a stalwart of sports in this area. Penn State, there used to be uh, games between Penn State and Pitt, and that was a great rivalry between the two teams until they went separate conferences. And, of course, the money was more important uh, than the rivalry. But when this story broke and it became apparent that there were individuals within the Penn State organization who knew about this yet did the bare minimum what they had to do in Pennsylvania we have a law that requires educators, pastors, so forth. We have a law that requires them to report any incident of childhood sexual abuse or physical abuse. Well, the, initial, the person who initially saw this happening did what he had to do legally. He went to the coach, and the coach did what he had to legally, went to his superior in Penn State, and they seem to have decided that maybe it was better not to pursue the matter. Of course, the bottom line of all of this is not morality or not what's right or wrong. The bottom line of all of this is money. While college athletics are considered to be amateur, they're really professional sports. They generate millions and millions and millions of dollars for the university. And I have no objection to that. That's what the market will allow, quite frankly. If you gave me a ticket to go, I probably wouldn't go. That's my own opinion. I don't have anything against people that like sports. That's their business. But the thing is, college athletics is just as much a business, uh, really more so than the uh, professional athletics, only because they disguise it as being something else, but it's not. So all these things that happened, uh, the passing of the buck, as it were, was because they were afraid they would upset the system. This man who was accused of doing these things was at one time an assistant coach. Some said he might have been the heir apparent to Joe Paterno. He would have become the the head coach at one time. My goodness, can you just imagine that? But the good old boys in the football, uh, the athletic department, obviously did not want to disrupt the system and tried to do whatever they could to make things as easy and as soft as possible. And in the meantime, molesting still went on. This man went on to molest who knows how many, who knows how many kids. We don't know. So now the whole thing is exposed, and Joe Paterno, who would have been honored as one of the greatest coaches that ever lived, they were planning on giving him a Congressional Medal of Freedom uh, for being a good example. He's lost all that, and who knows what kind of lawsuits are coming his way. The other ones involved who were in positions of leadership, uh, positions of trust, had forsaken all that, and this Penn State University, which... It's considered one of the fine schools of our nation, gets a black eye. Who knows what's going to happen to their recruiting for their football team? Uh, it's just a big mess because people decided to pass the buck. For once, I agree with our President, Barack Obama, who said it's a time for America to do some soul searching. Soul searching. Truer words have never been spoken. Because I can guarantee you what happened in Penn State, it's happening elsewhere too. It's happening in other universities and colleges, big and small. It's happening in high schools and Boy Scout troops and Girl Scout troops and 
wherever, wherever there's an opportunity for one of these pedophiles to take advantage of a child, it's, it's going on. It happened in the Catholic Church and it's happened in other churches. Don't be pointing fingers at the Catholic. Because the Baptists and the Pentecostals and the, all the others, they have their share of folks that get involved in this kind of stuff. The people that do these things, they need to be saved. They need to hear the gospel. They need to put their trust in Jesus. They also need to be dealt with. Jesus said that when sin abounds, the love of many will wax cold. What do we expect in our nation, in our culture? There was one time when profanity and when sexual content you would never see it on TV. You would never see it uh, in the movies. But now it's commonplace. You see it in commercials. Do we wonder why we're living in a society of all the sexual immorality and, and people who abuse children when we're force-fed every day on TV, on the radio, and the music, and everywhere we feed our kids with all this sexual stuff that at one time, 30, 40, 50 years ago, would have, we would never have thought of putting that stuff out. But now it's just every day. We wonder why these things happen. Because we live in a nation that's turned its back on God and has promoted, they've, they've, they've tried to make every kind of sin legal because it pays. Gambling, prostitution, pornography, it's okay, because you can make money. That's, that's the, the nation, that's the culture we live in. So while this horrendous stuff is going on in Penn State, it's just, it's just part of the culture. Part of the culture that we have allowed to happen, and that we participate in. And sad to say, there's a whole lot of folks who say they trust in Jesus, who get caught up in it too. We all need Christ. Our nation needs Christ. These people, these pedophiles, they need Christ. They need, to, they need forgiveness. God can forgive them. And God wants to forgive them, even though they may have to pay the consequence for the rest of their natural life. If you're not a Christian, then you need to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're hooked on pornography, if you're a pedophile and you're watching this, if you're a predator, if you've committed those kinds of sins and you've never been caught, you need to turn yourself in to the authorities and you need to call out on the name of Jesus and ask God to forgive you. Because here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, woe to them that cause one of these little ones to stumble. It's better if you tie a brick around your neck and go jump off the bridge than to stand in front of a God that you've never repented and you've never asked forgiveness. To stand in front of that God and be faced with what you've done. Jesus said that. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please do so. If you have sexual problems, problems with pornography, problems with uh, uh, immorality, fornication, adultery, whatever it is, you can get them all healed at the cross. But you've got to come to Jesus. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.